In this video, let's talk about the cosine rule. I'm going to split this video into two parts. The first part is how to apply the cosine rule, and the second part, I'll show you the proof. Now, for right angle triangles, you can apply Pythagoras theorem to find the sides. But what if it is not a right angle triangle? So this is when the cosine rule comes in. Because as long as you know any two sides, and if you want to find the third side, so long as you know the angle in between two of the sides, you can find the length of the third side. So it's really useful. First, let's identify the cosine rule. Now the cosine rule says that a square is equal to b square plus c square. Now this is something like your Pythagoras theorem, but you know for Pythagoras theorem, a square here will be the side of the longer side, the hypotenuse. But if your triangle is not a right angle triangle, then a, b, and c can be any side. So what do you do? You have to minus away two times b c cosine of the angle. This is convenient. Now, alternatively, because you can rename a, b, and c, you can have b square is equals to a square plus c square minus 2ac cosine b. And naturally, you will have the third one, which is c square is equals to a square plus b square minus 2ab cosine c. Now, I'm not sure whether you can see this, but so long as we can prove one of the identities, the other two is the same. So let's see how we can apply this. Okay, say you have a triangle A, B, and C. So the first part, find length A, B. So if you just apply cosine rule, A, B square is equal to the other two sides square, add them together, so 10.4 square plus 8.8 .8 square, minus away 2, multiply by the two sides, times cosine, of the angle opposite to AB, which in this case they have given it to you and it is 67. So if you press your calculator, you will have 114.4 cm. Now this is AB square. So to find out what is AB, simply just square root both sides. So square root AB square or square root 114.4, you will have 10.7 cm. So always remember, in your working, keep your working to at least four significant figures because if you want the final answer to be three significant figures, your working needs to be one more to, for it to be accurate. If you keep this as three significant figures, at the end, your answer may, may be off by one decimal. So during your working, always keep one or, or two more decimal places. So that's part one. Now let's look at part two. So the second part, you are asked to find out ABC. So angle ABC is this guy. And since you know two of the sides and two of the angles, you can make use of sine rule. Or you can make use of cosine rule. It's up to you. But sine rule is probably easier. Now, um, we will use sine rule. Sine of angle ABC over 10.4, you know, the opposite side to the angle is equals to, now uh, you can make use of this, 67, so sine of 67 degrees over the side, you have found it to be 10.7. So if you want your answer to be accurate to three significant figures, you need to make use of at least four. So co coming from here, if we were to take square root of 114.4, and you make sine of A, B, C to be the subject of the formula, so multiply 10.4 to the other side, you will have 0 0.8963. So this is four significant figures. And finally, A, B, C will be equals to sine inverse of this value. And you will have 63.68 degrees. Now you know that when you take the sine inverse of a value, you can have more than one value and the angles in a triangle can be between 0 to 180 degrees. You know, sine of this value is this and this is a positive value. So if you remember our previous videos, we, we talked about the fact that your angle can be in the first or the second segment. And if your answer is in the second segment, it will be 180 minus this. But if you look at the triangle, it clearly says that, it clearly shows that every single angle is less than 90 degrees. So it is, you can't have any angle that is bigger than 90 
in this case. So ABC, or angle ABC, will be 63.68. Now for the last part, and to find angle BAC, it is trivial because you are looking for the only unknown angle in a triangle. So it's simply just 180 degrees minus the sum of the two angles that you already know. So 67 degrees plus 63.68 degrees. And your answer will be 49.3 degrees. So to stick to a convention, for non-angles, you can use string significant figures. For angles, you can leave to one decimal place. So to be consistent, ABC should be equal to 63.7 degrees. Okay, say you have a triangle, you know the length of all the sides. So this is the triangle, 8, 9 cm, 12 cm. So let's say you are tasked to find out the smallest angle. So the smallest angle can be angle A, B, and C, but you need to know the properties of a triangle. The size of the angle is proportional to the length of the opposite side. So in this diagram, angle C will be the biggest angle, as you can imagine, because when the opposite side increases, you know, the angle will increase. So the smaller side will be side A. So say we want to find out what is side A. Let's put in our formula. The side opposite to the angle that you can plug into the cosine rule will be 8cm. And 8 square is equals to 12 square plus 9 square minus 2 12 times 9 cosine the angle in between, which is 8. So I have an awesome equation here that gives you all values except for one unknown, so you know that you can already solve it. So if you make cosine the subject of the formula, so cosine a is equals to 8 square minus 12 square minus 9 square divided by minus 2 times 12 times 9. So if you punch in your calculator, this will be equals to 1, 6, 1 over 2, 1, 6. And a will be cosine inverse of this value, 1, 6, 1 over 2, 1, 6. And your answer will be and your answer will be 41.8 degrees, which is one decimal place. Okay, to prove the cosine rule, it is not too hard. Just draw a triangle. Inside this triangle, you can draw a dotted line so that you can find two right angle triangles inside. So let's call the length A to this part, X. And then this will naturally be B minus X because the length here is B. And this guy here, the length here, is the height, so let's call it h. So in this triangle, if you use Pythagoras theorem, you can see that a square, which is this, a is the hypotenuse of the smaller triangle inside. So a square is equals to h square plus b minus x square. Now if we open out the bracket, we will have equals to h square plus b square minus 2bx plus x square. Now if you rearrange this, you will have b square plus h square plus x square minus 2bx. Now from here, you can see clearly that h square plus x square is c because this is also a triangle and c is the hypotenuse of this triangle. So using Pythagoras theorem, this is actually c squared. c squared is equals to h squared plus x squared. So if you rewrite it, you will have b squared plus c squared minus 2bx. Now x is this guy here. So if we call this, if we use this angle, this is angle A. And cosine of angle A is equals to x over c because C is the hypotenuse of this triangle, this right angle triangle. And x is equal to C times cosine A. So if we were to dump this back inside here, your x, this is equals to, equals to B squared plus C squared minus 2B. And instead of x, we write down C cosine A.